disabled. We're all burdened. We all have weaknesses and flaws and imperfections. It's what we do with that. That's what matters. Being disabled isn't something to shame. It's something to embrace. So here's my how before we move on to the bigger picture. How am I enabled in our disabled world? Well, it isn't easy. If it takes a village to raise a child, it took an army of resources to get through college. That's me, circa 1996. The inspiration behind those three motivations in my daily life today. She doesn't look very happy, does she? I don't blame her. By this point, her rose-colored glasses on the world had come off. She realized then what I say today, that our society puts more value on perceived physical capabilities than mental capacities, and that's such a shame. We all have lessons to learn and lessons to teach. And learn, grow, and change. That's what she set out to do. There's nowhere for you to go in a place that thinks you're a tragic waste of potential. And I did decently well at that on my own. Sorry, technical difficulties. Okay, hopefully that gives me enough voice to get through the rest. So I did decently well at that until I had a major medical event in my life in 2016, and my whole world flipped upside down. See, the government has a very nice long list of suggested major life activities, as we can see in this top right corner, when determining disability under the ADA. Now, what can you see about this lovely table of major life activities? Well, what's striking about it? That I'm not very good at think domestic things anymore? That the easy ones are the hardest for me? Or that I'm actually only good at the high-functioning tasks? Yeah, try explaining to the world that you've $20,000 in project funding, but you can't get your shoes on by yourself in the morning anymore. It doesn't work out very well. So what did this mean for my college education? What did I do? Cry, beg, scream, all of the above? There's not much I haven't done within the bounds of legality and morality to get my college education. I honestly told my advisor that they'd have to drag my degree out of my cold, dead hands before I'd give up on it. Because why? Outside of manual labor, <coughs> excuse me, I'm so sorry, and professional sports, should our bodies decide much of anything? <coughs> I knew that my future lay within this diagram, that education was the key to a better life. Yet how did I succeed where so many people in our, this community fail? Where depressing statistics reign supreme in members of my tribe across the country in high schools, colleges, and professional settings. These statistics are really upsetting. It'd be easy to say egotistically that my resiliency is what saved me. However, it honestly boils down to the fact that equity is not equality. If you give my peers and I four weeks to study for an exam, and you're expecting that those people have 10 to 20 hours to study for that exam, but if I'm in the emergency room and recovering from four short-term memory losing seizures, de dealing with an infected catheter and ha having paralysis for 15 of those hours, which ultimately boils down to having 45 minutes to study for that exam, how well do you think that I'm going to do in comparison to my peers? Now let's say we move the exam a week, and what happens if I get a sinus infection and don't have any additional study time? D is that reasonable? Perhaps not, but my life and the members of my population, our lives aren't the most reasonable thing. So what is our option other than to fight for a better life? And how else can we do that than to advocate for ourselves? I always tell myself that as an individual, not necessarily as a teammate, that I'll worry about my punctuality more once I finally have the education to do what I'd like to be doing. Education, in my view, is the time to grow the most. And if it only hurts me, what does it matter? So equity is not equality, and after five years of drowning, people started listening to me. I gained allies, champions, for impossible reasons that believe in my value and see that my benefits beyond my burdens. 
So we can see this for ourselves in this slide. This is what happened when access is created. We can see it in the fact that one of my friends was willing to try to record a voiceover so that we could try to save my voice. We can see it in the fact that another one of my friends attempted to help me do my slides last night. And my homework has been written by so many lovely people. And because of these facts, I then got to do amazing things of winning awards and creating amazing projects and starting a business. So, because a dear friend picked up where my voice tends to trail off today. So like the answer to life, which is livid in my opinion, the answer to being enabled in our disabling world is rather simple. Enhance abilities instead of emphasizing disabilities. Embrace those imperfections. Enjoy what we can create when we bring a team together of imperfections. Amplify, empower, extend. Stop limiting, degrading, and demoralizing. Now, everything that I've said is a whole bunch of lovely words, but how do we put that into practice? All of life is a connection, a communication, and a collaboration. So, I invite you to start a conversation with me right here, right now, everyone else here today, with the community, because no one is truly disabled. The world is. We just need to become enabled. Change is a ripple, not a tsunami. And so I invite you to come see my student work later today as a spark club for ideas to be enabled in our world, especially in our STEM world. For equity to exist in an increasingly technological world, my community needs the right tools in our toolboxes. So, thank you for your patience and your kind attention. What questions, comments, and concerns can we talk about? Morning. Sure. Um, so, be enabled is kind of a two factor concept at my life at the moment uh, because I stole the name for my overarching company, which is great. Um, but I believe that you're referring to my transportation project. So, uh, it was conceptualized through an event earlier in the year here at OCL where it's a redesign of the nationwide paratransit system because there are many, many issues within the paratransit system. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my poster from later today so everyone can see a little bit more information as I talk about this, because I know my voice is not the greatest to listen to right now. Uh, let's see. So, okay. So the thing that I wanted to point out here when talking about being enabled, i sorry, not sure how to get this bigger at the moment, but in a recent study, individuals with disabilities were surveyed about their transportation needs, and a third of the respondents acknowledged that they have a transportation issue in trying to go to the workplace or go to education, and half of the respondents that mentioned a mobility issue um, they mentioned that it was a massive issue, that the more severe your mobility issue, the more issue that they had with the paratransit system. So with Be Enabled, um, we tried to take my experience and experiences of other individuals, especially here on a campus setting, and identify the pain points and come up with some solutions. So we saw it as a two-factored solution where um, you would first, uh, optimize the operating system, you know, give p riders a way to even know approximately what time they're even going to get off the bus. Because when I get on a bus, I don't know if I'm gonna be on there for 30 minutes or three hours. Uh, I once waited on a bus for six hours. So we started with that, and then we also talked about um, redesigning the actual vehicles, because as we move more towards autonomous vehicles, the current vehicles are not truly optimized for people with mobility issues. And I would hate to see society accept the current design moving forward. What other things can we talk about?
Absolutely. I have kind of run the gambit of interesting experiences with professors. I had once had an experience with a professor who was talking about potentially sending me to COAM because he didn't believe me that the department had the day previously sent me to the emergency room despite the fact that he was present when the paramedics were called. Um, yeah, that was a fun story. Um, so that was a challenge. Um, but then on the flip side, um, as I've gotten further into college, I had five years of very frustrating stories of professors that wouldn't work with me. Um, but then I hit some amazing champion professors who really changed everything. Uh, last year at this time, I was nearly getting thrown out of my major. And this year at this time, I'm a upcoming graduating senior, and I'm really looking forward to the future, and I wouldn't have that future if I didn't have two professors that stood up with my academic advisor and be like, who are we if we throw the BME patient out of BME? Um, it was really fascinating because at the point at which those two professors had stepped in, neither one of them had had me as a student. Yeah, it blew me away too. Okay, everybody good? All right, well, I w encourage further conversation. Please feel free to find me at all this weekend. I will be at the poster session definitely to talk about more about this poster. Thank you all so much.